the 2009 US Open final matched up a guy who had won the tournament the previous five years in Roger Federer and a young 21 year old who had just put away Rafael Nadal and Juan Martin Del Potro. Now Del Potro wasn't a slouch, he was a top 10 seeded player but still many people believed that Roger Federer would just glide past him as that's what he had done in the last six meetings. But this one was different. The US Open 2009 saw a new star in the making. Del Potro ended Roger Federer's dominance as he clinched his first ever Grand Slam title and in the process became the only player to win a Grand Slam by beating both Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal in that same very tournament. But as it is said, whenever there is a high for you, there is always a fall. And for Del Potro, this came very soon after winning the US Open. In his first ever match after his triumph, he lost in the very first round of the Japan Open to a 189th ranked player and then had to proceed to retire in Masters 1000 in Shanghai and then again in the Paris Masters. Many believe that his back-to-back -back withdrawals were down to the longevity of a tennis season, but oh boy were they wrong. 2009 did however see Del Potro reach yet another final in the ATP World Tour Finals held in London. He did finish the year by being the youngest top 10 player at the time, so big things were expected from him. But what has followed post-2009 has been nothing short of disappointments. Yes, he's seen his fair share of successes in a couple of years since then, but 2009 US Open is still the only major title that Del Potro has won and right now he has been once again sidelined due to his injuries. So what happened to Del Potro? So welcome to Tennis Express and today we will be talking about what happened to the promising career of Juan Martin Del Potro. We'll start off in 2010. In January, Del Potro was ranked number 4 in the world and keeping the fact in mind that he had won the previous major, Del Potro went into the Australian Open as one of the favourites. But then he got knocked out in the 4th round to Martin Cilic. Now this sort of underwhelming showing was down to his wrist as it had been giving him some problems prior to the tournament. So as a result, Del Potro decided to sit out the next three months. But since his wrist wasn't showing any sort of recovery, he was told to go under the knife. And as a result, he was sidelined for six more months. So he never really got a chance to defend his US Open crown. Del Potro's return later that year did not go as planned. He lost in the opening round of both the Thai Open and the Japan Open and also found himself outside the top 250. 2010 was an off year for Del Potro. 2011 would surely be better. The start to that year wasn't so good. He lost in the second round of the Australian Open and then found himself ranked 485th in the world, but then things got better. Due to his status, Del Potro was handed wildcard entries and reached the last four in three major tournaments, even winning the Derle Beat Championship. All of this activity helped Del Potro regain some of his form, and as a result, he reached a 2011 BNP Paribas Open semi final. And then he continued his active run by participating in the 2011 Sony Ericsson Open and then the Estoril Open. Estoril Open was a tournament that Del Potro won. But all of this activity put his body under immense stress so as a result he suffered yet another injury. And like the previous year's Australian Open, Del Potro rushed himself back just so he could play in the French Open. Djokovic wasn't having his rushed back return as he knocked him out in the third round. Del Potro then continued to play at every given opportunity that he had and even though he wasn't finding any success in the majors and the 1000 Masters scene, his constant runs to the quarters and the semi-finals helped him finish the year as a number 11 ranked player just 10 months after he was ranked 485th. 2012 was more or less similar for Del Potro. 
he reached the final four of ATP 500 or higher about five times and he lost every single time. And the same thing happened to him at the Olympics. He was the bronze medalist after losing in the semi-finals to Roger Federer, a guy who had beat him about six times already that year alone. Del Potro wasn't able to make the jump that he had done in 2009. He wasn't able to go past that final hurdle of winning a major trophy. 2012 was yet another slightly disappointing year for Del Potro. His biggest moment of the year surely came when he retired an American legend in Andy Roddick when he beat him in the fourth round of the US Open. A tournament, by the way, in which he was knocked out in the quarterfinals after he came across another top player in Novak Djokovic. But overall, the progression in Del Potro's game could be seen. After falling into the abyss and being ranked 485th in the world, Del Potro had clawed himself back up to being a top 10 player. 2013 was time to go back into the top 5. He started the year off by winning the Rotterdam Open, reached the finals of the Indian Wells and at Wimbledon, he reached the semi-finals for the first time in his entire career and only lost that with Djokovic after giving it his all for 4 hours and 43 minutes. Del Potro then won his second title of the year as he won the 2013 City Open and then he won yet another title by winning the 2013 Japan Open then reached the final of another ATP 1000 event, this time in Shanghai, and then won his fourth title of the year as he won the Swiss indoors by beating Roger Federer. This year showed that Del Potro was back. By January 2014, he was once again ranked in the top 5, but that's when his problems began. His wrist was once again an issue, and after trying to fight through the pain and failing, it was time for Del Potro to take some time off. Del Potro missed rest of the season and was even expected to miss the start of 2015. He wasn't supposed to be back for the Australian Open but Del Potro claimed that he was fit and wanted to be back. His wrist had other ideas. It let him down in the Sydney Open so as a result Del Potro pulled out. In June, he went under the knife once again. He had yet another surgery and then had to sit out yet another year. 2016 saw the re-emergence of Del Potro. This time around, he hoped to kickstart his career for the third time. And like in 2011, things were a bit hit and miss. He would beat one of the top seeds like Avavrinka and then lose to a lowly ranked player in the next round. But in the Olympics of 2016, he was finally able to catch some rhythm and went on a decent run. As the 145th ranked player himself, Del Potro was drawn to play Novak Djokovic in the very first round and Del Potro beat him. Then Souza, Bautista Agut and Rafael Nadal soon followed and then Del Potro found himself playing for the gold medal against the reigning Wimbledon champion in Andy Murray. Andy Murray put an end to his run but, but still a silver medal is very respectable for a 145th ranked player. Del Potro took all of this momentum that he had gained from the Olympics and then headed to the US Open. He reached the quarterfinals, his first since 2009, but then he lost to the eventual champion in Stanislas Wawrinka. Del Potro's next big moment that year came in the Davis Cup, with Argentina 2-1 down and Del Potro himself 2 sets to 0 down. He pulled an amazing comeback to win in 5 sets to level the Davis Cup final score at 2 2. Del Bonis then took all of his hype and brushed aside Ivo Karlovic as Argentina won the Davis Cup. Like his previous comeback, Del Potro was once again failing to beat the top seeded player in his second year after his injury. But this time around, he was being careful. He wasn't as active. He would withdraw from tournaments he wasn't feeling good at. That's why he withdrew from the Australian Open and the Madrid Open. And on the court, he was beating the players that he was supposed to beat but was losing out to Djokovic mostly and to the likes of Kai Nishikori and Roger Federer, all higher seeded players than him. US Open was once again the tournament that Del Potro found himself again. 
he reached the semi-finals. Now this one was more impressive than you'd think. He won the first three rounds without dropping a single set and then in the fourth round he was two sets down and got injured and nearly retired. But the fighter in Del Potro kicked in and he completed his comeback and made his way into the quarterfinals where he defeated Roger Federer. Del Potro then sort of fell off after the US Open but he did win his 20th ATP title as he won the Stockholm Open of 2017. 2018 was the best year in terms of honors for Del Potro. His performances that year were the one that people had expected from him when he won the 2009 US Open and he might have even delivered on the promise if it wasn't for those constant wrist injuries. The start of 2018, however, wasn't so great for him. But in the Acapulco Open, he landed his 21st title and then he went on the run. He won the BNP Paribas Open, his first Masters 1000 title and then reached the semi-final of the Miami Open where John Isner put a stop to him. He then had a disappointing run in the clay season and even had to pull out of various different tournaments due to injury. But he did play in the Roland Garros, a tournament where he reached the semi-finals but then he lost out to Rafael Nadal. Of course he did, French Open is Rafael Nadal's tournament. The next major tournament was Wimbledon. Once again, Nadal put a stop to him. All of these performances had seen Del Potro get ranked number 3 in the world, his career high to this very day. In the US Open, he reached the semi-finals and like Wimbledon and Roland Garros, he came across Rafael Nadal in the semi-final. But unlike those tournaments, Del Potro got one over him. Now Nadal retired due to an injury but Del Potro was already 2-0 up. Del Potro in the final hoped to win the US Open 9 years after winning his first but it wasn't to be. Novak Djokovic beat him in straight sets and then Del Potro lost another final soon after in the China Open and then another injury struck him. Del Potro hurt his knee towards the end and was ruled out till early 2019. He did return in Madrid Open 2019 but lost in the first match back and then had an underwhelming run in the French Open and before Wimbledon in the Queen's Club tournament, he injured his knee once again and was ruled out for yet another year. In 2020, before he could even make his return, he was forced into yet another surgery because of which he is still out. The 2009 US Open still to this day remains the only major Grand Slam that Del Potro had won. His run wasn't a fluke, but his physicality is what that has let us all down. First his wrist and now his knee has combined seen him sit out nearly five and a half years since he had won the US Open. So yeah, this was a video on somewhat unfortunate career of one Martin Del Potro. Like, subscribe, have a good day and I will see you soon.